Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and I think I might have solved the riddle of my little typing thing popping up all the time. We'll see if that's true or not. We are going to explain the trends of the periodic table. So, we are going to talk about size and nuclear attraction, how that explains all trends. And what that means is size and nuclear attraction explains all trends. So what that means is if you have to explain a trend, you are going to talk about size and nuclear attraction. So really, if you're not sure what to talk about, you're going to talk about size and nuclear attraction. I hope that means it's important and you're ready to roll with it. Um, we're going to talk about bond energy, which is Q1, Q2 over radius squared. So really, it's not equal. It's proportional. So remember, Qs are the charges. And if Qs are the charges, that's nuclear attraction. And R is the radius, which is size. Okay? So let's look at our first trend, which is size. So on the periodic table, we have hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. So as you move to the right, you're adding protons. Remember, protons are attractive to electrons. So if this nucleus is plus 2 and this nucleus is only plus 1, this one's twice as attractive, so it actually gets smaller. So if this one is yay big, this one would be yay big. Okay, notice it's smaller. So as you go from left to right, it gets smaller. Okay, lithium is yay big. Neon is, notice it's a, it's a touch smaller. They both have two rings, one ring, two ring, one ring, two ring. But this distance right here is longer than this distance right here. Okay, and that radius is the size. All right, so what we're going to do is look at um, the size periodic table here. And the biggest elements are right here, and the biggest elements are right here. So as you go down, it gets bigger because there are more energy levels. So remember how we did 1s2, 2s2, and all that? An energy level is like this guy right here, which can also be called a shell, which can also be called a cloud. It should not be called a ring. Okay. As you go this way from left to right, it gets bigger that way because there are fewer attractive protons. So if there is nothing attractive about English class, you stay far away from English class, right? So if there's fewer attractive protons, there's fewer attractions in your English class, you're going to stay farther away. Okay. So that is size. Ching, 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 ching. Electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability to attract free electrons. See, I've got a metal, or not a metal, I've got an element, and I've got an electron, and if I attract it, I become x minus 1. So if you're trying to attract a negative electron, a smaller size is more attractive. So fewer energy levels is more attractive. That means as you go up, it is more attractive because it is smaller. And it is smaller because it has fewer energy levels, okay? And it also is more attractive because it's closer, okay? So notice size and nuclear attraction. Hey, 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 okay? Now, more protons is more attractive. So as I go this way, what happens here is I have more attractive protons. So if I have more attractive protons, I'm more attractive to electrons, and my electronegativity goes up. Hey, how about that? So the, the best of them all, remember we're going to kind of ignore the noble gases, the best of them all is fluorine. Okay. The biggest element is francium, which it's not the best for electron affinity because big is not good for attracting. Ionization energy. Ionization energy is the energy to remove a valence electron from a gaseous atom. Start with an atom. I rip off an electron, and it becomes x plus 1. So the smaller size is going to be more attractive, right? So it takes more energy to remove it. So guess what? We've got king fluorine again. So this increases as you go up because you are smaller, because you have fewer energy levels, and closer is more attractive. If there's a little honey that you are attracted to, you want to sit next to that little honey, right? Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, 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 I do, right? All right, as you go across, 
more protons is more attractive. So here I've got more protons, so more attractive. And if you're more attractive, remember, you're trying to rip off electrons, attractive. You're trying to remove a valence electron. Well, if it's very attracted, it takes a lot of energy to remove it. Okay. Now this part is crazy hard. I wish there was a page break in here. So if you've got your thing digitally, you might want to page break this one right here. You can identify the elements family by looking at successive ionization energy. A huge change in an ionization energy means you're leaving the small, attractive, noble gas state. Hey, size of nuclear attraction. Here we go again. Okay. So on this first one, the first ionization energy, ripping off the first electron. Ouch. So if I had Na, it would be Na yields Na plus one, plus one electron. Okay. Oops. I don't know why I put a little vertical line there. I didn't mean to. Plus one electron. Here I have Na plus one. Um, yields Na plus 2 plus 1 electron. Okay, So if I start off with sodium, sodium is right here. It has 11. If it loses one, uh, it ends up on this number 10, right? And what it lost, it just got a lot smaller. So it's much smaller. Much smaller. So if it's much smaller, therefore, it is much more attractive. Now, what do I mean by much smaller? So if I'm sodium, oops, if I'm sodium and I have three layers, so I've got layer one, layer two, layer three, and I've got one electron in it. If this one is three, and this one is 10, and this one is 30, if I lose this electron and it goes away, my radius isn't 30 anymore. It's 10, right? That's a huge change, okay? So if it's, you know, that much closer, it's going to be that much more attractive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for a huge change. This change is about 500. This is about 4,000, right? This is about 2,000. This is about 2,000. This is about 4,000. This is a huge change go from 500 to 4,000. So what that means is that huge change was leaving the noble gas state. This was my second one. So that's my second ionization energy. My first one was from sodium. So that's how I knew this was an alkaline. Yikes. If this one's crazy, you're all right. We'll do another one or two, and then we'll talk about this a lot more in class. Um, so in this one, let's look. Change is about 500. Change is about 1,300. Change is about, yeah, what is that? About 1,000. Change is, ooh, it's 11,000. So this change, this one's first one's about 500. Then this one is about... 1200 then this one is about 1000 and then this one is about 9000 notice that's about 10 times bigger this is my huge change that means my fourth jump leaves the attractive noble gas state so that means this is going to be i'm hoping this is dark enough you can see it that's jump number one i'm sorry that's jump number four right so that one's going to leave this leaves noble gas this is going to leave alkali. This one's going to leave alkaline earth. And all I'm doing is I'm counting backwards. Noble gas, alkali, alkaline earth. And then again, we ignore that poor D block. That means this is the aluminum group. Uh, not the aluminum group, it's called the boron group. Boron group. And that's the first one, so that's how I know, oh, that's the one, okay? So a cheating thing is the family equals huge minus one. So my huge one was the fourth, so four minus one would be three in this case, and the third family would be one, two, three. And we're going to ignore that D block because it's not a valence electron. All right, that's it. All right. Metals react by losing electrons. So metals are large and unattractive. Remember how we said this is the largest one and it has the fewest protons, so they're large and unattractive. So the biggest and least attractive elements are the most reactive metals. Biggest and least attractive are the most reactive metals because they are the best losers. All right. Metals react by losing electrons. The best losers are the most reactive. Okay, so that means the most reactive ones are going to be this way. 
and this way. Francium is our most reactive metal. Nonmetals react by gaining electrons. Okay? Nonmetals are small and attractive. So if they're small and attractive, then the smallest and most attractive would be the most reactive. So if they're small and attractive, the electrons say, hey, how you doing? And they come over here. And my most reactive nonmetal is fluorine. Okay, remember this is getting smaller and more attractive, attractiver, because it's getting smaller, attractiver. And this one is getting smaller and attractiver because more, more protons. This one's getting smaller and attractiver because fewer shells or energy levels. Okay. All right. Last part, finding replacements. So elements, the same family are the best choice to replace elements. So we talked about how um, some things are more effective replacers than others. We talked about the radium growths, how the radium replaced calcium. Now, that's not what you wanted it to do, but they fit and they could do those same things because they're in the same family. Here's my friend calcium. Here's my friend radium. Oops, calcium didn't get circled. Here's my friend calcium. There's my friend radium. That's why they replaced and the girl's jaws fell off. <coughs> Jason told me just today in class that arsenic, AS, replaces phosphorus in um, some proteins, which is why arsenic poisons us. We need phosphorus in those proteins to stay alive, but instead we get arsenic. So if we're looking to replace things, I guess this makes it sound like they're bad, but if we're looking to replace things, we look in the same family for something that will be chemically similar. Okay. These are examples where they didn't work the way you want them to, but they did replace them, but it would be worse. So I guess if you start out by saying, huh, my bones are made out of radium and falling apart. Let's use calcium. Hmm. I keep eating food and it kills me. Let's change arsenic to phosphorus. And then you have a happy day. That is it. We will talk about this tons more in class. And for that, I will tell you toodles.